When Stan Lee created the X-Men, he thought the X had a dual meaning. Obviously, it stood for Xavier, but it also stood for extra power. Well, silly, it's kind of true. I mean, all of the X-Men I love have a multitude of powers. Wolverine doesn't just have the claws, he's got a healing factor and enhanced senses. Gene is telepathic and telekinetic. Cool, leave some for the rest of us. Storm has the lightning most prominently, but she also has all the powers of a storm. Go figure. The X-Men to me, they've got the coolest collective powers in the superhero game. And then there's Cyclops. Paper hey, bitch, paper hey, bitch. I don't like that actually. I know you guys think it's fun, but I don't like it. He's just got the one gimmick, the beam eyes. I didn't say laser eyes just to avoid the explaining in the comments. Whatever, laser beams. He shoots freaking laser beams out of his head. Now evidently my cycloptic colleague informs me that that can't be done. That is cool, but compared to everyone else, he doesn't have the most versatile power set, let's be honest. And hey, maybe he could have been awesome in any of the X-Men media I saw growing up, but unfortunately, nothing ever proved that wrong. The original animated series finished when I was a toddler, the live action movies came along, and I ate those up. X-Men 2. That was the first DVD- I have a no! James Marsden's Cyclops never really got his due. He sure looked the part, but he was always getting bitched up by Wolverine, and then in X-Men 2, he barely had any screen time. He gets his ass handed to him by Lady Deathstrike so damn easily. I mean, who can forget this? <laughs> and then he lost the love of his life in Jean Grey, and things went from bad to worse. <laughs> Xavier laments that Scott is a changed man at the start of X3. He's not even leading the team. Shut up, Scott. You only lost the love of your life. Get over it, you panini melt. Of course, this sets up a really awesome redemption arc for Psyche as he steps up to lead the team once again and helps Jean to free herself from the Phoenix Force. <laughs> Not. Uh, nah. I mean, we all seen the movie. He sees Jean and then dies immediately. Goodbye, Cyclops. Goodbye, X Men trilogy. Goodbye, any semblance of a character arc. Where's my arc? He then popped up in X-Men Origins Wolverine, a spin-off to a character that was already the lead, which makes a ton of sense, and he gets wrecked once again by a Weapon X reject. This time, Sabretooth. <laughs> I mean, he's in high school, he doesn't really need to be in this, it's pretty much non-canon now anyway, I'm sure you've probably forgotten he was even in it. For two mediocre movies, Scott was recast for his younger 80s and 90s days as Ty Sheridan. And much like James Marsden, he is a quality actor given less than stellar material. If you touch her, I will fucking kill you. You'll do nothing. You'll do fucking nothing. The younger Cyclops definitely got more screen time and more to do, but his powers only cemented him as a one-trick pony. He didn't show off his leadership skills, and they tried really hard to make him seem like a bad boy when he was anything but. The only thing American about this place is that it used to be British. This is Scott. So all in all, Cyclops has kind of sucked my entire lifetime. Even in the comics, he did things like kill Xavier and was a massive dick. Tater. The only time I've really legitimately enjoyed him was in the X-Men Legends games. Those optic beams were seriously sweet. But it's a video game, you know? It's hard to imagine Cyclops being very awesome on screen. Whoa, holy shit, that Super O landing was nuts. Did you see that? Reload that, reload that. Ew. God. Cyclops using his own optic beam to break his fall off the back of a sweet dive bomb before rallying the X-Men around him? To me, my X-Men. That was awesome. Okay. X-Men 97, I was skeptical of this living up to the original series, but it so far has certainly exceeded my expectations. This has been the best Cyclops in years. But anyway, no, actually, one more time. How back get in there? <laughs> oh, don't cry. Perfection. That superhero landing is quite possibly the best superhero landing ever. It's cooler than watching a character who merely flies down. Cyclops has to use some serious skills and neck crunches to pull that off. It shows some versatility to his powers in a way that's always been lacking in the movies. I want to see him use his powers in cool and unique ways, 
not just blasting people away. <laughs> you missed. Speaking of versatility, I love that Cyclops uses his optic beams not only for attack, but for defense as well. Using the beams to shunt backwards out of harm's way is a seriously cool way for him to be agile. He's all over the shop in this first fight scene, and it is awesome. <laughs> I also love it when superheroes have a good range of abilities, but well realized weaknesses too. I love that if you are skilled enough, you can knock off his visor clean and put him in a precarious position. Bah, normal people have it hard too. Harder! We just have the dignity not to whine about it! Sure, Cyclops could annihilate this guy, but would that be best for his fellow mutants? He feels like he has to set an example to the world so that people will trust them. Even though he's well within his rights to defend himself, it's an awful situation for him to be placed into at the hands of this bigot. Also, we watch him tear up a sentinel. Awesome. I actually go outside in these things. What would you prefer? Yellow spandex? I like the old X-Men leathers. As I detailed in my History of the X-Men costumes video last year, so I'm not going to rip into them now. They worked at the time, they made sense in the context of that take on the X-Men world, and I don't even think they were badly designed. However, the later X-Men movies had the chance to go full comic book, and instead they edged us every damn time. X-Men Apocalypse gave us black flight suits. Hey guys, flight suits. During a time where all of the key Avengers had accurate looks faithfully translated to the big screen. Then there's the famous final scene where Scott and the team get outfits with actual colour, and yeah, this is kind of similar to his awesome 90s look, but I think when you really look at it, we were just desperate for more comic accurate material. Is this outfit really that good? There's something off about it, from the bulky forearms to the material to the colours to the piping, it doesn't really rock like it should. But don't worry, they never get seen again, and X-Men Dark Phoenix barely bothered to put the team in costumes at all. So my god, how refreshing is it to see Cyclops being awesome in his very best costume again? I know this is a look translated from the original series and the comics it was based on, but after all these years of disappointment, it's definitely a plus to X-Men 97. It's a vicious cycle, the movie Cyclops would have been cooler acting and fighting like this regardless of those crappy outfits, and he would have been cooler with little to do if he actually had a good look. Having both, that's just seriously sweet. With Hugh Jackman getting his comic accurate look in Deadpool and Wolverine, and the prospects of the original team coming back, I think there's a good chance we'll get James Marsden in a costume just like the one in X-Men 97. The blue suit, the yellow straps, the pouches, the boots, it's all perfection. And if you can translate the Wolverine yellow, this should be easy peasy. I would also lose my shit if they put him in that flight jacket over the top too, that is one of the all-time Cyclops looks. Also on my wish list, Storm in that sweet white outfit. Storm is one of my favourite X-Men, and I've been dying to see her in that outfit for years. <laughs> of course, all of these elements are superfluous without a good story and good characterisation to back it all up. Otherwise, Scott would have been just as hollow as he was in the films. But no, so far X-Men 97 is delivered, and I can't wait to see where it goes next. Scott has given us some great lines. Give him the forecast. But he's also been put through the ringer, having to step up and be the leader that Xavier was, except he's not Xavier. You know, if he were here, the team wouldn't be shooting hoops. You're too hard on yourself and the team. And then having to deal with Magneto coming in and saying that Xavier left everything to him. Everything he built now belongs to me. And he's having to contend with the fact that, is this what Xavier wanted? Did he not think he could step up and lead the X-Men? I don't get it, Gene. Did the professor not trust me? And then on top of that, he's got his pregnancy with Jean Grey. She's about to give birth. And then over the course of the first three episodes, she gives birth, and then they find out it's not the same gene, it's a clone from Mr. Sinister, and then Mr. Sinister kidnaps their baby, and then he has to go rescue them. All while this is going on, there's Magneto's trial, and more bigots, more humans are trying to tear them apart and stop them just from living normal lives. Literally everything that you could put against Cyclops is happening in the first few episodes of this cartoon for Gene as well, and it is fantastic. And the other X-Men get really good storylines as well. You've got the burgeoning romance with Magneto and Rogue. 
you've got Storm losing her powers, which was really unexpected. And I'm really interested to see where that goes. I'd like to help you get back what you've lost. Just in terms of the spectacle, you got to see the X-Men tearing apart Sentinels. And then episode three, it went all kind of scarecrow horror tinged, a little bit Cronenberg. I wasn't expecting all that. It's also just cool to see them adapting a lot of the coolest storylines from the comics with Madeline Pryor and Mr. Sinister and Cable and even Bishop and time travel. It's just reminding me why the X-Men are the GOATs. I wasn't particularly excited for X-Men 97, not for any reason. I didn't think it was going to be bad, but I just felt a bit tapped out into superhero stuff. But this has reminded me how good this genre can be when it's firing on all cylinders. There's a whole lot to chill on in just the first three episodes of X-Men 97, more so than many of the first three episodes in Marvel's bloated budget live action streaming shows. I think this show is exactly what Marvel needs right now. It's a strong continuation of a nostalgic classic, but it's more than that, offering compelling new angles to characters we love with epic animation and action to boot. I hope the flashier Marvel characters return to theatres, the street level goats dominate the small screen, and shows like X-Men 97 prove animation is just as important as any of that. With a kick-ass Cyclops leading this team, anything is possible. And I, for one, cannot wait to see where this goes next. Oh, and for Deadpool Wolverine, this really is the year of the X-Men. Nope, I'm actually okay, thank you very much. If you want to hear more of my thoughts week to week on the following episodes of X-Men 97, then why not check out the Full Fat Podcast. I'll be recording the episodes on Wednesday, straight after the episode, probably releasing them on a Thursday, with my buddy Charlie Lee shooting the shit, going into all the juicy details. And if you want to join up now on the Patreon to get the Full Fat Podcast, there's already five episodes out. We're covering things like California Split, the Deadpool Wolverine trailer, Roadhouse. It's a good old time. Yo, a huge, mahoosive thank you to Peter Vaughan, who is my new full fat tier patron, as well as the good old reliable Dr. Chike. Thank you very much for your contributions.